Hello, District 81 parents. This is Dr. Borshevsky. I am going to share with you right now a presentation that we shared uh, with the school, with the members of the Board of Education last night at a special board meeting. Hopefully, after viewing this presentation, some of your questions will be answered and a little bit of your frustrations will be relieved. Um, I want you to know that this hasn't been an easy uh, decision for us, and we really did think thoughtfully and deeply on what the best way was to return to school while making sure that we're doing everything possible to keep our students and our learning community safe as we face this um, crisis that COVID-19 has uh, created for us. ISBE released guidelines on June 23rd. Um, it was a 60 plus page document that basically outlined what, re what return to school should look like. In that guidance, they made clear that they really wanted us to focus on trying to bring kids back to school while also making sure that we provide face coverings and um, social distance our kids and staff members whenever possible and make sure that we are um, doing symptom screenings and temperature checks before we put kids on buses and let them um, enter our school buildings as well as um, you know, increase disinfecting and cleaning the school while providing our students five hours of instruction every single day. And those five hours could be, you know, um, a blended model, which is what we're presenting, fully remote or in person. I want you to know that our plan does um, implement uh, these guidelines. We followed these guidelines. We made sure that our kids and our staff members are social, social distancing while they are in school and that they are wearing face masks. And we're doing that, why? Um, not just because the guidelines say we should, right? But, but primarily because the science has taught us, science has taught us that these things work to reduce the spread of COVID-19 and keep people safe. So our main priority when thinking about starting school was again, the safety of our students and our staff members and how we can bring everybody back to school in the, in the best way possible, knowing that there was a very real possibility that there would be exposure, right? Our second priority was making sure that we were delivering a school experience to our students that felt more like a regular school day. We knew that the e-learning experiences in the spring needed to be a little bit, the e-learning experiences that we delivered in the spring weren't gonna be enough to start the school year in the fall. And I hope that once you see the sample schedule that you'll understand that we really worked hard to make, our, make this experience feel more like real school for our kids. The guidance told us to make sure that we prioritized our kids with IEPs and our EL learners. We took it a step further and we gave priority to our kindergarten and first grade students to give them an opportunity to be in school four days a week as well. Um, I just want to remind you that COVID-19 is still here. We are still in the middle of a crisis situation and we are navigating unprecedented times as we face the new world around us as it relates to this pandemic. So we see what's happening in Illinois currently. Our, our cases are risking up. We are watching what's happening in states around us who opened up too quickly. And we are being uh, overly, overly cautious as we, as we reopen our school and implement our plan. And that's really only because we are taking very seriously the, the importance of creating a safe, a safe learning environment for everyone. So that's why what we're offering is really two options. We're offering to our parents a full remote learning, five hour instructional day, keeping your kids at home. For those of you that just don't feel safe sending them back to school right now, we understand that and we wanna make sure that we provide you with the opportunity to keep your kids home if you should choose to do that. We're also offering the blended model, which brings the kids back to school two days a week and remote learning three days a week. Well, I realize that there's frustration that there's not another option here, which gives the kids the opportunity to come to school five days a week. The reason that's not an option is because we don't have the space in our buildings to bring all of the kids into the building at the same time and keep them six feet apart from each other. We also don't have the option, and many of you have asked, to keep the kids in school for five half days. So bring half the kids to school in the morning 
and then the other half of the kids to school in the afternoon. The reason why we can't do that is there's not enough time and manpower to thoroughly clean and disinfect the school and have kids come into the same space that other kids were in in the morning. So it was strictly with safety in mind that we decided to present these two options to you. You have asked, uh, some of the questions have centered around, well, what are we doing? What, it, what are you doing to keep kids safe? Are you taking temperatures? Yes, everybody's temperature is gonna be taken before they get on a school bus and before they enter the building. Every student and staff member will be squirted with hand sanitizer before they board a bus, before they enter a building. Kids are gonna be required to wash their hands with soap and water after they sneeze or cough or blow their nose. Everyone in the school will have face coverings on. District 81 staff members will not only be wearing face masks, but they'll also be wearing face shields. I will supply two cloth masks to every student, and I strongly encourage parents to consider taking us up on the opportunity to get your child a face shield. You may ask why. Well, that keeps them from sticking their hands in their, putting their hands on their face, and it keeps them from putting their hands in their eyes. But again, that's optional for parents to think about. I want to assure you that we're gonna be highly sanitizing high touch areas. So light switches, doorknobs, surfaces will be um, cleaned frequently throughout the, the day, which include, and that also includes our bathrooms. The schools, the spaces in the schools will go through a very deep cleaning and disinfecting on Wednesday when everybody is home remote learning. So that the kids that were in school on Monday and Tuesday, before we bring new kids into school on Thursday and Friday, our custodians are going to have an opportunity to deeply clean that school building before new kids come in and occupy the same space. And we'll be doing that exact same thing on Friday evenings before letting new, the kids come back to school on Monday. We've purchased several disinfectant backpack sprayers. Those sprayers are going to be used daily in all areas of the school to spray the classrooms and the buses between each route. This is an example of what the personal protective equipment is that we'll be buying for students and staff. Many of you have asked what we're doing with the CARES money. The CARES money that we've received, which we haven't received yet, but supposedly we'll be receiving, will be used to cover the cost of our equipment, plexiglass, cleaning equipment, as well as other uh, materials that we are purchasing to keep kids safe and the building clean. Um, some of the questions that we received is, are we gonna shut the whole school down if someone gets COVID-19? Well, no, that's how we're trying to keep our kids socially distant, right? And make sure that they are limiting their exposure to each other. So basically what will happen is kids will come into the building and they will go straight to their classroom where they will remain for the full three and a half hours a day. They're not gonna be moving around the school as they have been in the past freely. The only people that will be moving around the school are the teachers as they move from one classroom to the next. If someone does get COVID-19, anyone exposed to that person, whether they have been diagnosed, right, diagnosed um, with COVID-19, or they have symptoms and are expected to be diagnosed with COVID-19, anyone who has been in close contact with that, with that person will be required to stay home and quarantine for 14 days. That includes students and staff members. We are also required to provide quarantine areas for people who exhibit symptoms. We have decided to make our quarantine areas in large spaces and use movable walls to create areas that are six feet apart from individuals to make sure that we're not exposing a child who may just have seasonal allergies and is coughing to someone who's coughing from COVID-19. So that is why we are using all different areas in the school for all different things to make sure that again, we keep our kids six feet apart and keep them as safe as possible. Students will not need to bring school supplies this year. The district is issuing two sets of supplies, one set for home and one set at school. The only thing that will be coming back and forth between home and school is the iPad and at this time, we're considering a drawstring bag to transport the iPad back and forth so students don't need to bring their backpacks. The drawstring bag can just be hung on the back of their chairs. The kids will not be accessing lockers and classroom items will definitely not be shared. 
Kids will be provided with, students will be provided with a water bottle and a snack that will sit on their desk so that they can access a drink or a snack during the three and a half hours that they are at school as our water fountains and our buildings will be shut down. There'll be only 12 students in a classroom. Their desks are spaced um, six feet apart. You can see in this image here, this isn't what our first grade classrooms looked like when we left in March. This is what they look like now, and this is an attempt to make sure that our kids feel safe. They'll basically come in straight from the bus or their parents' car, and they will sit in that seat where they will remain for the majority of the three and a half hours that they are at school. They will, students will be receiving five hours of instruction a day. They're broken up into groups A and B. So the A groups will be in person with their teacher on Monday and Tuesday, while the students in the B, the B group will be accessing their classroom where that teacher and the students are via live streaming. So they're still getting the three and a half hours of content area instruction if they're at home. They're just getting that instruction via live stream. Then the kids will go home with the grab and go lunch or breakfast, depending on what your free and reduced lunch status is. And parents will fill out those applications like we've done in the past. If you don't qualify for free and reduced lunch, but you still want to purchase lunch for your child, you'll be able to do that. And kids will go home with their breakfast and their lunch for the next day. After they've had the opportunity to eat lunch at home, the afternoon will be remote learning, and that time will be focused primarily on physical education, art, and music, as well as health instruction. Each day will end with a class meeting and an SEL lesson for our students. As I said earlier in this presentation, we are keeping our preschool children at home remotely because we think it's virtually impossible and developmentally inappropriate to expect a three and four year old to understand the importance of social distancing. The blended instructional model is outlined in this table, which I sent out last night to many of you in my letter. You'll notice that our kindergarten and first grade students, again, are coming to school four days for three and a half hours a day. We think it's important that they have access to their teacher as much as possible. We are concerned, I'll be honest, that three and a half hours a day may be too much. We're going to try this out. If we have to reduce the number of hours, we will do that. You'll see that second through eighth grade students come to school two days a week and an A-B schedule that's rotating. While I understand that that's frustrating for you, I just don't have the room to bring all the kids back to school four days a week and keep them six feet apart from each other. We were able to give priority to our special education students and our ELL students, um, as was recommended in the guidance from the state. Those children will also be coming to school four days a week. Parents, please keep in mind, if you make a decision, because this is a question that has come up um, consistently, Let's say you decide that you want to send your kid back to school, you think that it could work out, and then it just becomes too stressful, you can always change your mind. Or if you decide to keep your child home and things quiet down and you want to bring them back, you can change your mind around that topic as well. This is a sample schedule, so it just gives you a really basic overview of what you can expect school to look like for your child in August. A more detailed schedule will be shared with each, with each of you from your child's um, from the, from the building principal of your, of your student. But you'll see in the morning, three and a half hours, is when we're gonna be focusing on content area instruction, reading, writing, math, science, and social studies. And then in the afternoon, for an hour and a half, is when kids will receive their special classes or their explore classes, with each day ending with a social emotional class, social emotional learning lesson and class meeting. This is just, again, what we're doing for our kindergarten and first graders. Parents have asked me, Dr. Borshevsky, how are you gonna social distance them if you bring them all back? Well, the reason I'm able to do that is because we have space to spread the kids out throughout different places in the school. So we used to have seven sections of kindergarten and seven sections of first grade. But now with splitting the kids in half, we're gonna have 14 sections of kindergarten and 14 sections of first grade and there'll be 10 to 12 students in each section. Our special education students will be supported by our resource special education teachers. Um, these kids will be um, getting their service provider, their, they'll get their service um, 
They'll get their therapies from their service providers who will push into their classroom setting to deliver their therapy services to them. Our EL students, and these are our students whose language levels are from 1 to 3.5 as defined by the spring access test that we were able to administer before we sent home, will come to school four days a week. Two days a week, they're going to be with their general education teacher. The other two days a week, they'll be with our ELL bilingual staff. School bus um, transportation is certainly going to look a lot different. District 81 historically transports everybody in the community if they so choose to access transportation. However, the state guidelines say that we really are only required to access kids that live a mile and a half or more away from school or are um, required to cross a hazard route to get to school. So we are going to have to limit the number of students that we transport um, based on those guidelines. Um, and we are also looking at consolidating bus stops because we've reduced the capacity of our, of our buses from 76 to 23. So that's going to take us a little bit more time to get our kids to school. And the reason that the bus capacities have been reduced is because we have to social distance the students while they're on the bus. So you'll see now to the left is what a 77 passenger bus capacity looks like without COVID-19 and required social distancing. And the right is an image of what, what a 77 passenger bus capacity looks like while we're social distancing um, students with all the red seats being spaces where kids cannot sit and keeping in mind that only one student can sit per seat, no longer three students or two students to a seat. Students will have their temperature taken before they board the bus. They'll also be required to wear a face mask and they will be given bus sanitizer before they the bus. I did send out a letter and a parent survey yesterday. That survey will be available until Friday. Um, please feel free to continue to complete that survey and add your questions in and I will do my best to continue to update and answer them. I know that this is frustrating. I um, want you to know that many of you have asked about daycare. We clearly don't have the space right now to offer Kids Club any space in the buildings. Just because the spaces have been reallocated to become classrooms and we are going to have to make sure that our custodians have enough time at the end of each day to disinfect and thoroughly clean those spaces. I do know I've had a conversation with the Park District Director of Schiller Park that he is considering offering some sort of a daycare. You may want to reach out to him and ask him where he is in the planning of all that. Again, I thank you very much for your time. I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your grace. I hope you all stay well, and we will see you soon um, when we bring our kids back to school in August. Take care.